yeah, especially you, smaller ones. And um, you have friends. I uh, don't know how, how the grown ups are. Some of you have friends. Uh, I have some friends. How do I assess them? How do I know that these are my friends? Um, we talk. That's one of those key things that we do. We, we chat. Um, we help each other out, right? They need a hand, I, I, I rock up. I need a hand, they, they rock up, right? Uh, we eat together from time to time. Uh, obviously, lockdown has hindered a lot of friendships from flourishing in the eating. Uh, but soon, God willing, we'll be back to the grilling and the feasting. Uh, we hang out. We know each other. Um, both in the, in the good times, but also in the, in the not so good times. Here's a question. If someone only got in touch with you when they needed something, how long would it take before you stop being friends? Just, just thinking. Uh, if you had an answer in your head of like the amount of months, you know, or, or the amount of times that have come to you, that's worth just holding on to, yeah? If it's, if it's um, let's say, the 10th time they ask me for help, without ever doing anything else with me, I will know that we're not friends. Yeah? Are you, are you with me? Are you tracking with me here? You assess your friends by the full balance of how you interact, not by the specificity of one thing. Uh, uh, how many of you, I don't know, maybe don't raise a hand, uh, have a friend who um, only rocks up when the party's on? Do you know what I mean? It's like I'm moving house. I've got sofas and stuff like that to shift. You don't rock up. But when it's housewarming, yeah, there, you're there, yeah, shake a leg and everything. How many parties before you're not friends? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm, I'm just a mean one here. It's probably me, yeah? But <laughs> we probably each have that friend who we know rocks up for the good times um, and we know aren't really our friends, but we just stay in touch with them. Like if they text or text back or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Um, if you have such a friend, are you satisfied with that friendship? Let's go with thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah. Down, I like that. That was very clear. Down. We're not, it, it's, not, it's, not, it's not okay. But some of us, some of us would have had that friend who every single time was present. When you least expected them to be there, they rocked up and that kick-started something of your journey. When the chips were down, or even when they weren't, you know. Uh, we have a friend who um, messaged us and said, hey, um, why don't you just drop your kids off with me and then go have a meal together? I was like, you sure? Because <laughs> who does that? Who does that? I'm like, you sure? And so we went and we left our children with him and we had a nice meal. How much do I value that person right now? Yeah? That is someone who knocks on my door at midnight and I answer the door with an open heart, right? There are those who someone would have rocked up on your birthday when everybody has forgotten with something. Someone would have rocked up on your most rotten day with a bar of chocolate or a hand to just put on your shoulder. Someone would have invited you to a walk or just come and knocked you out of your house and gone, let's go, let's get out of this cloudy space. Someone would have knocked on your door with Prosecco and said, hey, today is a good day, let us celebrate together. I've had, I have this good news and I couldn't think of anyone better to celebrate this with than you. A good friend has this key component to how they interact with you. And the word is this, and you can repeat it after me, consistency. Consistency. 
it, 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 if someone is consistent towards you, you trust them, right? Because they don't let you down. They are consistent. When a parent is a good friend, that is just phenomenal. When a parent is not a good friend, that is a hard place to be. When a child is a good friend, that is incredible. Uh, you guys will grow up soon. It's going to test you. Uh, being consistent with your parents when you have your own place. You go to visit them and stuff like that. The vicar told you when you were little, go say hi to them. Regularly phone them. Be consistent. Because when you do that, trust forms and the friendship deepens. Why am I talking about friendship when we're discussing a psalm? How often do you have a conversation with dad in heaven who's awesome as we're told to pray? When things are happy and going well, when the coffee smells brilliant, the hazelnut in the latte is just coming through, you know, and you've got the mug there, it's a nice day, you've got your book, the sun is shining. Or maybe you're sitting somewhere in a beer garden watching the bubbles rise in your jar. Do you say, hey, what's up? Or do you wait? Do you wait until it's desperate and you are run out of plan A, B and C and then plan D hasn't worked, plan E hasn't worked, plan F hasn't worked, so you go to plan G. What's up, God? Where is the consistency? The Christian life isn't just about having a good set of moral values. I, I, I suggest, actually, it's nothing to do with the values themselves. Why is someone a Christian? This is a key question. Why does someone become a Christian? Why does someone call themselves a Christian? Something historic happens in history. Um, in fact, all of history calls everybody to be some way in relationship with God. Because he did not have to. But at the beginning of our scriptures, he does something. And when we enter next, uh, this next season, starting from next Sunday, we'll be looking at the book of Ephesians. And the, 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 the writer in Ephesians begins by reminding those who are listening that they were chosen before the foundations of the world. So way before in the beginning, somewhere in his mind, God thought, ah, this kid's going to be so good at riding a unicycle. Oh my gosh, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give him this color eyes. I'm going to make sure her fingerprints look like this. And this is what her parents will be like. He did not have to, but preemptively he did. And the years have shown his consistency because the love never waned. And when humanity, our, our kin, us, in our hearts and by our deeds, showed a lack of consistency, He did not turn away. He did not go, oh, I'll just start afresh. Um, he did not count the amount of times we have gone to him just when he is plan G rather than in relationship. He did not count those against us, but hanging on the cross says, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. Dad, my friends are idiots, but I love them. The story of the prodigal son, what's that about? An inconsistent relationship between a father and his child. And what's it about? The consistent love of the father for that child. So that at any point when that child returns, the conversation doesn't have to start from desperation. This is what I need. It starts from, hey, stop talking. Stop talking. I love you. Stop talking. Just come. Let me, let me hug you. Let me wash you. Let me give you clean clothes. Let's have a party. You're here come home like that's constant consistent love and so 
Our series on the Psalms culminating in this. This is a Psalm of petition, which is a conversation about what you need and, and who it is you need it from. It can't go forward unless we are certain of the space, the need, the importance of just consistent dialogue with dad in heaven. Can I tell you a secret? Yeah. Um, even to this day, when I bow my head to pray, I feel really stupid. It, can you connect with that? Is it just me? If, if, if I was talking to you, I wouldn't feel stupid because you're here. Do you know during lockdown, when you weren't here, guess how I felt? Really stupid. Because <laughs> I was standing here, and Joe was at the back and he'll tell you. I was standing here, there's loads of like contraptions over there and like a little screen which I couldn't focus on because I had to focus on the camera to make sure I was looking at you guys and stuff like that. Some of you are still there. Um, it felt really stupid, but I knew you were there. So even to this day, and I've, I've been a Christian since I was three years old, so that's, that's a long way ago. From then till now, it still has an element of folly to it. But I know he's there. I have no doubt whatsoever he's there. And it's in that space. It's in that space of choosing to go to the foolish place for my friend. That our friendship actually deepens. Because I will pray in public. No worries whatsoever. Why? Because his consistency calls me to a consistency. He's, he's, he's never turning away, never feeling embarrassed about me, calls me to do the same. And so we talk. We talk when I'm eating ice cream. We talk when my mouth's full of pizza. We talk when I'm angry. We talk when I'm deep in laughter. We talk when the church is empty and I'm just walking here listening to music, preparing for the service. We talk when I've opened his work. We talk. And because we talk, when things go pear-shaped, he's not plan G. And the dialogue is easier. And here you have David, who is described as a man after God's own heart. And he probably didn't write this psalm. I hate to break it to you. But it would have been a prayer that he recommended. Someone in their wisdom took this piece of poem, added it to this book and said, guys, this is a nice way to, to develop your language of conversation with God. You can say to God, hey, hey, I need you to hear me. You are my God. You are forgiving. You are good. I know what you're like. Um, I remind God that he has a rotten sense of humor and then he laughs at me. <laughs> How do I know that? Because in my points of deep desperation, when I said, hey, can you sort this out? His look and the sense I've got is him going, <laughs> which is power because he's reminding me the circumstance I think is a mountain is this small for him. And our friendship should not depend on his power being used to my benefit. Otherwise, that's not a friendship. And so, here we are. <laughs> we are still navigating this weird season. We are in his house. There will be more weird seasons to come. Very many, more, of different kinds. It won't always be a pandemic. It will be something else. And my challenge to you for today for this whole series of Psalms, and you can go back and watch and listen to all that's been taught, is this. Increase the level of dialogue that you have with our dad in heaven. Increase the level of dialogue and the quality of dialogue and the quantity of dialogue and the difference in the circumstances where you dialogue. Because when you become consistent, you learn more of his consistency. And I guarantee you, there is no better friend through the good, through the bad.
because I love you, I'm going to sing to you. I know it's embarrassing, but I'm not ashamed of my friend and I'm not ashamed of you. Yeah. And as I sing, this is my song from the silence, from the places where I need to di dialogue with him. It's not me who wrote it, but it conveys all that I'd love for us to take with us. And as I do, maybe your heart will start a conversation with him. Let us pray. <clears throat>